you know, our identities are, are pretty suspect mm. if you think about it, right? Our idea that there's a self mm. um, is, is remarkably suspect. So for this project, what was great was the invitation to explore that question by way of, by way of creatures who are not human. Um, and I think, I think, you know, we, we were, but part of the reason the AI has come up again, and it starts, it starts in infecting the work, <laughs> um, maybe in person of interest, interstellar, and then I stop kind of doing anything that isn't about AI, <laughs> because it kind of feels like this is the big question of our time. Mm. And we're, yeah. we're in some ways very, it's very scary, but we're also very, very lucky to be here at this incredible inflection point mm -hmm. where we are about to share the world for the first time in a very long time with another sentient set of creatures. And that is absolutely something that we're gonna have to struggle. And we were talking about this the other day, it's, it's amazing. I, I'm not sure if I think a large language model is sentient, mm -hmm. but I was suspicious of the fact that every mainstream article you'd read about GPT-3 by the third paragraph quickly explains that, of course, this isn't real intelligence. Mm -hmm. This isn't real consciousness. This isn't real general intelligence. And you say, how do you know? Why are we so quick to say that? Mm -hmm. We just keep moving the goalposts, mm -hmm. right? As we've always moved the goalposts, as we've always only conferred the idea of consciousness and sentience on one small group and denied it to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, the, the, with every adaptation, you want to find a reason why you're doing the adaptation, especially if it's something good, 